Hey, welcome to Church Online. What an unusual season we are finding ourselves in, and you're having church at home. And we're so, so thrilled and honored that uh, you joined us tonight for this service. And, um, and we are doing everything that we know how to do to uh, create an opportunity where you can worship, where we can pray together, and where we can open up God's Word. And, and so tonight, I wanted us to just jump right back in where we left off last week. Uh, talking about our Fire Bible articles. And so tonight, we're going to be opening up our Fire Bibles to uh, Proverbs chapter 4. And in Proverbs chapter 4, uh, we are looking at the article that is called The Heart. Oh, my screen went off. Hold on a second. We're having a technical, technical difficulty right this moment. I'm about to fix it. And right in this moment. Now we're back. Okay. Hey, welcome back <laughs> to uh, our Fire Bible study where we are talking about the heart. So if you have your Bibles open tonight, open them up to Proverbs chapter 4, and we're going to be looking at verse number 23 on this article called The Heart. And in uh, chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible says, Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life, the issues of life. Another translation says, out of the heart flow all the issues of life. And how many know in life, we've got issues? I mean, right now, we have issues. I have issues. I can't stop touching my face. And so I have all these issues that I've got to get through. But the Bible says that it is our heart that we have to guard with all diligence because uh, we can blame habits, we can blame culture, we can blame our uh, in-laws, we can blame a lot of things. But until we realize that the issues that we deal with uh, come from within, they come from our very heart, we will always struggle and wonder why we're struggling. And so I want us to look at the article on the heart tonight. And uh, there's uh, two big aspects we're going to look at. But, but when we talk about the heart, you need to know that we are not talking about the uh, organ inside your chest that is pumping blood throughout all your body. I mean, that's a very important uh, issue also. Make sure you're having uh, good heart health and good heart uh, diets to take care of your heart. But that's not what we're talking about tonight. We are talking about the Bible's usage of the heart. And when the Bible talks about the heart, it is primarily talking about your intellect, your emotions, and your will. And so when the Bible says that we should love God with our heart or hide God's word in our heart or, um, you know, let, let Jesus come into our heart, what are we talking about? The Bible, when it uses this term heart, is primarily talking about our intellect, all of our thoughts, our mind. It's talking about our emotions, how we feel, uh, how we're experiencing life. And then it's also talking about uh, our will, our decision-making process, how we make decisions. And it looks like I'm having issues even as we speak tonight that my uh, monitor is wanting to jump off on me. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to work through these issues because we got our hearts right. And so let's talk about two contrasting descriptions of the heart, though. Uh, that are found in the Bible. The first one uh, is what we're going to call a heart that does not belong to God. What does the Bible say about the condition of our heart when it does not belong to God? Well, in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, the scripture declares that the heart is more deceitful. What? <laughs> it is deceitful. It's lying to us. It lies all the time. It's more deceitful than all things and desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Our hearts, when they, are, when they do not belong to God, they lie to us. It's like our hearts are trying to tell us fake news. You know, our hearts are trying to tell you, hey, if you're going to make it through this uh, coronavirus episode, you just need more toilet paper, right? And your heart is trying to convince you to go out and do all these things. But what we need to know is that our heart is deceitful. Jesus said it this way in Mark chapter 7. He said, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. What kind of evil thoughts? Adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, 
and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these things, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. Look at all, look at all that list of things that God says when our heart does not belong to him. Uh, all these things fill our heart. I was looking at the scripture and I was looking at the, uh, the evil eye. I was kind of wondering, what's that? You know, is that kind of, you know, when you have that little thing going on with your eye or maybe you had a mom that used to give you the evil eye. I'm not really sure, but, um, but it's in there. It comes out of your heart when it happens. And I'm just wondering, maybe, maybe it's not such a good idea that we actually uh, follow our hearts, especially if our hearts don't belong to Jesus, because there's all this thing in the, all these things in there that will lie to us and deceive us and bring destruction in our in our lives. And here's the other thing the Bible teaches us: that if we continuously refuse to give God our heart, we then run the risk of cutting ourselves off from God. We run the risk of cutting ourselves off from the grace of God. Look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8 through 12 with me. Here the Hebrews writer says, Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. He's talking about the Israelites when they had been uh, rescued, saved out of Egypt and were trying to make their way to the promised land and they were in the wilderness season. He says, Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of temptation in the wilderness. Where your fathers tested me, don't test God, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. God was trying to win their hearts for 40 years. Therefore, verse 10 says, I was angry with that generation, that whole generation that hardened their hearts and said, they always go astray where? In their heart and they have not known my ways. Verse 11 says, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. A whole generation didn't get to go into the promised land. So verse 12, he gives us the warning. And he says, so be attentive, brothers. So pay attention to their story and apply it to your life. Be attentive, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart. And watch this. And you, you depart from the living God. Not so much that God is saying, hey, I've given up on you, but I'm touching my face again. I can't help it. Uh, it's not so much that God is saying, I'm giving up on you, but because of your hardness of heart and you refuse to give your heart to God, you actually have departed from the grace of the living God. My dear friends, let's not be those people. Let's recognize that when our heart does not belong to God, that we, um, you know, we have hearts that will lie to us. We have hearts that are full of evil things, and we have hearts that will literally uh, block us from receiving from the grace of God. But God doesn't stop there in his description of the heart in the Bible. He also says that, but there's another kind of heart listed in the Bible, and that is the heart that is surrendered to God. And you see, uh, if, if our hearts, when our hearts don't belong to God, they're, they're uh, deceitful and full of all this evil. Well, when we surrender our hearts to God, we can know that God does something brand new in our lives. Come on, somebody at home, say amen. Go ahead and high five your neighbor, your child right there, right next to you. If you're all alone, high five yourself. It's probably safer that way anyways. But, um, but listen, we need to have God do something new in our lives. And, and so how do we do that? How do we surrender our hearts to God? Well, the Bible teaches us that we are to repent of our selfish sins, all the sins where we want to have our own way and we want to determine what's right and wrong for us. We don't want to let the Bible tell us how to live our lives. We don't want to let uh, Jesus be the Lord of our lives. When We're selfish. We're selfish in our sins. But if we will repent, if we will turn away from that selfishness, and if we will then turn to Jesus in faith, our hearts will experience a regeneration, a regeneration. That means that they will become something brand new. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said it happens this way. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, uh, he instructs us. He says, therefore, if you confess with your mouth, you, you make this decision in your heart and you say it out loud with your mouth, you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and 
believe in your heart. and You have to trust in your heart. You have to have faith in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that God proved Jesus' trustworthiness by raising him from the dead, showing us uh, that he is God, the Son of God and the Savior of the world. He says, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart... One believes unto righteousness. In other words, that's how we're made right with God. You want to know how to get right with God? Here it is. It's with your heart that one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And, you know, I remember, um, it's been over 30 years now, but I remember when I made that decision. I was sitting in the back of a building, in the back of a church building, and uh, the preacher explained the plan of salvation. And he asked the question, do you believe and do you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? And we're sitting in the back of the building. I raised my hand. I gave Jesus Christ my heart. I repented of my sins. I put my trust in him. And God did a brand new thing in my life. And God gave me a brand new heart. And, and so I see here uh, our screen has gone offline again. I apologize for these uh, glitches. We're going to work on that. We're going to try to get that right. All right, we're back. But, uh, but now what is happening is that when I gave my heart to Jesus, when I surrendered my heart to Jesus by, by professing with my mouth and believing in my heart, putting my trust in Jesus, now literally the Bible, Jesus lives in our hearts. And so no longer is my heart filled with evil and, uh, and all that deception, but now Jesus lives in my heart. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, the scripture says it this way, that Christ may dwell in in your hearts. He, he takes up residence. He abides with us in our hearts. How? Through faith. When we put our trust in God, Jesus lives in our hearts. And Jesus calls this being born again. So something happened in our hearts. We didn't just make a religious decision. We didn't just decide to become church people. Something happened in our hearts. We became born again. Jesus said it this way in John chapter 3, verse 33, or verse 3, chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so what happens when I surrender my heart to Jesus? Jesus comes into my heart and something brand new happens. I am born again and literally we have brand new hearts. Brand new, a life that is in us that, that didn't exist prior to this time. Psalm 51.10, the psalmist wrote this, Create in me, do a new creation in me, God. Create in me a clean heart, not a deceptive heart, not a heart full of evil and treachery, but a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Man, have you let God bring his cleansing into your heart. And, and, and when we get this brand new heart, it's not just a, a better heart. We're not just starting new habits. We're not just uh, trying to be nicer people. No, we are brand new. Uh, Ezekiel, the prophet, said it this way. He said, he said I will give them one heart, not, not a divided heart, a heart that is divided between God and all that sin. He says, no, I'll put, give them one heart and I will put a new spirit with them within them and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh that heart that was hardened towards God I'll take that out and I'll give them a heart of flesh a heart that beats with the heart of God and has a love for God and this new heart this new regenerated heart it's not just brand new but God fills it he fills it with the love of God he lets the holy spirit begin to do a brand new work in our hearts Filling our lives with love. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says it this way. It says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So instead of that heart that is hardened, full of evil, now as we have surrendered our hearts to God, He fills our hearts with the love of Jesus Christ. Literally the love of God in our lives. And this love that we have in our hearts now... First of all, it's to be a love for God. Come on, everybody at home, say for God. Our hearts are to be first and foremost for God. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God 
with all your heart. The hearts that God has given to us that are brand new are to be first and foremost for the Lord, to, for the Lord, to love God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. But then our, the love of God isn't to just stay in our heart. The Bible says this, that that love for God actually results in, a, in an obedience to God, an obedience to God. This is amazing. I love this passage of scripture in uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, and it says this. It says, Jesus answered him. He said, if a man loves me, he will keep my word. And I think that sometimes uh, we have been tempted to read this passage of scripture. Uh, if a man loves me, he will keep my word. And we think to ourselves, yeah, see, so the proof of your love is, is if you actually obey God. You know, uh, don't tell me you love God. Obey God. You know, show me that you love God. And we kind of make this scripture to mean that, hey, the proof of our love is, uh, you know, if we prove it, uh, is that we, that we obey God. But here's what the scripture is really saying. Take a look at with, with me. It says, Jesus answered him, if, look at that, conditional, if a man loves me, if we love God, if we've surrendered our hearts to God, if we've let Jesus Christ come into our hearts and, and now the love of God is in our hearts through the Holy Spirit and, and, and we're falling in love with Jesus, the Bible says, if a man loves me, he will. He will keep my word. In other words, that if you want your life to be transformed and you want to learn how to follow Jesus and obey God and obey his commands, then you got to start off loving God. Because if you will love Jesus, you will. You will uh, obey his commands. You will end up obeying him. It is the result of of love. And can I tell you, uh, one of the greatest commands that God gave to us is that we should love people. And this love for God will, in fact, result in a love for people. And, uh, and you know, the second half of the great command is Matthew 22, verse 39, when Jesus says, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Our hearts being surrendered to God, no longer uh, being that deceitful, hardened, wicked heart, now filled with Jesus and the love of God, learning to obey God because we love him, now also reaches out to people in love. Right now during the season, as we're kind of learning how to do church at home, my friends, I want to challenge you, I want to encourage you that uh, we're going to be making every attempt we know how to serve our community. We're going to be inviting our community to tell us, hey, how can we, the family of Glad Tidings, serve you? And I want to challenge you. Let's get out of our comfort zones. Let's get out of our uh, protective bubbles. Let's figure out ways to serve our community and uh, love our neighbors as ourselves. Can I tell you this very difficult decision that we made not to have church services in our building, but only exclusively online during this season. One of the major, major motivators for us was a love for others, a love for our neighbors and a love for our community. And if this is what it's going to take to slow and stop the spread of this coronavirus, then hey, we, the family of Glad Tidings Church, will love God enough that we are able to love our neighbors and say, okay, we will put aside what we would prefer to do and we will participate in loving our neighbors by doing church in a different way. Uh, online, at home, on your phone, or in front of your computer, uh, we're practicing how to love our neighbor. Because you see, my friends, it's all about a love relationship with God. You know, our hearts, when, when they do not belong to God, they will deceive us. But when our hearts are surrendered to God... It's all about us coming into this love relationship with God. And let me close with just a couple of thoughts. The first thought is this, that the temptation, and I would say the trap for you and I, is to substitute religious activity, religious appearing activity, religious rules, or even religious uh, uh, regulations for an authentic love relationship with God. I don't know why it is, but over and over and over again, the temptation for you and I is to not cultivate this love relationship with God, but to start to figure out, okay, so um, now that I'm a Christian, now that I'm, a saved, that I'm saved, what am I supposed to do? You know, uh, you know what, am I supposed to tithe? Am I supposed to serve? Am I supposed to go to church? Well, well sure, you know, all those things uh, matter, but those are not a substitute 
for an authentic relationship with God. Why do we do that? Why is it that we have hearts that seem to be pulled in the direction of trying to just do things for God instead of having this relationship of love with God? Well, uh, one thought is, is that it seems like checklists are easier, you know? It's easier just to have a to-do list and go down your to-do list and, and say, check, I gave, and check, you know, I went to church, and check, you know, I read my Bible, and check, you know, I was nice to the guy, you know, uh, down the street. And we just go through and check off our checklist. Uh, but on the other hand, you know what? Relationships are hard work. Uh, you know that if you're going to have a great friendship, if you're going to have a great marriage, if you're going to raise your children in a healthy manner, all relationships are hard work. Work And a relationship with God, it takes work. We have to work at it. And so Jesus warns us, hey, don't fall into the trap of substituting religious activity, uh, rules or regulations for an authentic relationship with Christ. Jesus warns us, don't fall into that trap. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus says this to people who, who were substituting religion for for an authentic relationship. And he said to them this, he said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, he said, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, you learned the religious lingo. You learned how to speak the Christianese. You know, you learned how to show up and do these things that appear to be religious. But the problem is your heart is far from me. My dear friends, I want to just challenge us. Let's return to our first love. Let's return to the place where you and I can come back to that place where we uh, prayed that prayer and we invited Jesus Christ to come in and be the Lord and Savior of our lives. Let's come back to that place where, where we just love Jesus, where we love reading his word just so that we can learn more about him, where we love reading the Bible, uh, just, or, uh, we love praying just because we love spending time with God. We love being in the house of God because we love the people of God and we love corporate worship together. I want to challenge us, dear friends. Let's not allow a spirit of religion to rob us of just the pure joy of having hearts that are brand new filled with the love of God, falling deeper and deeper in love with Jesus. Amen. And so in closing tonight, I want to I give you a little bit of a homework assignment. I want to I just challenge you with a couple of thoughts. Um, if you're with your family, especially if you're with your spouse or if you have your children gathered with you, uh, maybe you're watching with a group of friends, gathering kind of micro groups together, groups of three or four or five people getting together for these virtual church services all across our city and our region. Uh, ask this question. First, ask yourself, in what ways do our hearts deceive us? What are so those ways? When the Bible says that our hearts deceive us and they give us fake news, what does the Bible mean by that? Ask yourself if you can recognize even some times in your life, some seasons in your life, where maybe your heart was trying to deceive you and tell you something that is not true. Can I remind your friends, for instance, fear. Fear oftentimes is just false evidence appearing real. A time that our heart will be gripped with fear when the truth is there is no evidence that is real uh, for us to fear. And uh, like the great uh, president once said, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. So in what ways do our hearts deceive us? Secondly, I want you to ask the question in your home, in your family, with your friends, why is it? Why do we gravitate towards religious activity for God instead of cultivating an authentic relationship with God? And, and just try to think through that for yourself, for your family, for your friends. Why is it that we do that? And then finally, number three, ask yourself this question. What can I do to make sure that I am surrendering my heart to God and renewing my first love every single day? What am I doing? Am I taking time to pray, be in the Bible, listen to worship music, fellowshipping with people that are encouraging me? What is it that you can do? What is it that your family can do to ensure that we are surrendering our hearts to God and returning and renewing our first love every single day? Well, my friends, 
I want to challenge us. Let's be people who have a renewed heart. I want to pray for us right now. So why don't you, why don't you just pray with me? Close your eyes, bow your head. Let me pray with you today. And, and so, Father, I pray right now for every person who is joining us uh, at church at home, church online, having church at home or with their friends. And I pray that, Lord God, that you would challenge us to examine our hearts and decide for ourselves, God, do our hearts belong to you? Have we surrendered our hearts to you? Have we opened our hearts to let Jesus Christ be the Lord and Savior of our lives? Have we let the love of God be poured into our hearts so that all that deception, all that evil is now replaced with a love for God. Father, I pray for every person who is joining us right now. And I pray right now, if there's anybody whose heart is not right with God, I pray that right now, Lord God, that you would help them to open their heart to you. That right now, right where they're sitting, Father God, whether it's with their family or by themselves, Lord God, if they could honestly say that they have never had a moment in their lives where they have have confessed Jesus Christ to be their Lord, where they've never, where they've never uh, believed in their heart that God raised him from the dead, then Lord God, help them to right now, right now, Lord God, to repent of their sins, to turn away from that sin that has separated them from you and, and turn in faith to Jesus. Lord, may in their hearts right now, Lord, let faith rise up. I believe that many of you right now, you're letting faith rise up in your heart to believe that God loves you, that God has a plan for you, that God wants to save you. And so right now in your heart, if you would, if you would confess, yes, I need to give my heart to Jesus. I would need to get my life right with God to turn away from your sins. Then pray this prayer with me right now. Pray this prayer right out loud. Pray, pray, Lord Jesus, in my heart, I believe that you are the savior of the world, that you are the son of God. That Jesus, that when you died on that cross, you were actually dying for me, that I could have a new heart and a new life. And Lord Jesus, when you rose from the dead, you did it to prove to me that you were trustworthy, that I could put my full trust in you, and that the resurrection life that you experienced, I can experience that resurrection life by being born again, born of your spirit, letting your life come to live in my heart. And so Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash away my past. Help me to live the rest of my life for you. And with the help of your Holy Spirit, I will be a follower of Jesus. And one day when this life is over, I will have a home in heaven. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All over our region, there are people rejoicing with you right now. Those of you that prayed this prayer to have a brand new heart. And for the rest of us, let's ask God. Let's ask God to renew our first loves. Come on, join me right now. Join me in inviting Jesus to renew our first love. Jesus, we know that you stand at the door of our hearts and that you're knocking. You're knocking, Lord God. You want to come in. You want to sup with us and and we with you. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that, Lord God, that you would help us to recapture our first love, that our hearts would be so filled to overflowing, God, with love for you, a love that obeys you, and a love that loves other people. Lord Jesus, help us to, in these days when we can't gather as a church family, help us to renew the simplicity of our faith, a pure and simple love for Jesus. Bless us, we pray. I pray for all my dear brothers and sisters, all my friends and family, and I ask, Lord God, keep them safe during this pandemic. Lord, we pray that you would halt this pandemic and, and as long as this pandemic lasts, Lord, we pray that you would give us a heart so filled with love that we would love courageously and serve boldly and act intentionally in our communities as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we pray these things in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. God bless you, my dear friends. We love you so very much. Uh, have an incredible evening. Have a great week. Uh, we will be checking in with you, with you from uh, day to day through social media, and we will be having our online service, Church at Your House, uh, Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. God bless you. We love you. Have a great night.